The M1 is a new product by Xtool, a company that's already well known in the CNC diode laser space. This laser is quite different from the others though because it's fully enclosed, so it's much safer to use than an open gantry style laser, it properly manages smoke and fume extraction, and it's got a trick up its sleeve for hobbyists. Not only does it have a 10 watt diode laser module for cutting and engraving, but alongside it is a blade cutting tool, allowing you to accurately cut vinyl, paper, leather, fabrics and felt, all without leaving burn marks around the edges. The M1 is available with a 5 watt laser and a 10 watt laser, with a $100 price difference between the two. The 10 watt version is available in a bundle with a rotary tool and materials pack, and then a deluxe bundle with an air purifier, which is the bundle that Xtool have sent me to try out and show you. This bundle includes everything you're going to need to get started using both the laser and blade cutting modes on the M1. The materials pack includes coasters, dog tags, a mobile phone stand and wooden tags to engrave on, and then a range of sheets of wood, PVC, vinyl and card to try out. They also include four cutting mats, which you use in the bed of the machine to grip your sheets when using the blade cutting tool. The rotary tool is really cool. The main system is a standard two roller design, and then they've included a stand to help level odd shaped cylindrical objects like wine glasses or tapered mugs. They also have a chuck attachment which can grip objects directly to engrave on as well. Unlike most other CNC diode lasers, and largely owing to the housing that fully encloses the laser, the M1 comes pre-assembled. So you only really need to remove the packaging, connect your ventilation system if you're using one, and then download their software package on your computer. The air purifier allows you to use the machine in an enclosed area. It does this by filtering the exhaust fumes produced and then recirculating the air. It consists of an all metal housing with a fan speed adjustment knob on the front, the power input and switch on the side panel, and then the input at the top. Inside the housing is a stack of filtration media. There's a pre-filter to capture large visible particles, a middle filter which removes particles down to 0.3 micrometers, and then the main filter which absorbs harmful gases and odors. They supply a spare pre-filter with the purifier, and you can get a replacement filter kit from their web store. They don't really provide any information on how long the filters should last, or how often to replace them, although this obviously largely depends on what materials you're going to be cutting and engraving. If you don't go with the air purifier, the included ventilation fan and exhaust pipe will still allow you to duct the smoke produced from your machine out of a window or door. Although the fully enclosed design makes the M1 quite a lot larger to ship, and results in a smaller working area than most other machines, it's definitely a lot safer and more user friendly long term. The amount of smoke that comes off the open gantry style CNC machines that I've used makes them impractical to use in a space that isn't really well ventilated. I usually land up running mine on a table outside, which is unpleasant in the extremes of summer or winter, and impossible when it's raining. The second benefit to this design, and perhaps the most important one, is safety. The laser is fully enclosed in a Class 1 FDA certified housing, and the transparent cover filters blue light to protect your eyes. So now that we've got the Xtool M1 set up, let's use it to make something. I've been wanting to make my own custom keycap set for a while, and to be honest this project took a lot more time than I'd initially anticipated. To start with, I bought a DIY GK61 mechanical keyboard base. This is essentially a keyboard PCB with a base. You can then add your own key switches depending on the field you'd like to go for, and then add keycaps to the top of the switches to complete it. The switches I went with are Gateron G Pro Series red switches. I chose these switches because they look like a good mid-range starting point, not being too sensitive, not making much noise, and most importantly not being overly expensive. I quickly discovered that you can spend upwards of $1000 making your own keyboard, which seems crazy when over 40,000 people are perfectly happy with this $35 one from Amazon, which even comes with a mouse. With my base and switches unboxed, I then got to designing my keycaps, which took a few iterations to get right. I tried a range of options including square and round keys, different sizes and different fonts. I also redesigned the part that attaches to the switch about 10 times before it felt like it fitted both the switch and the laser cut cap correctly. I finally settled on this design. The keycap is made up of two round wooden parts, both laser cut from 3mm plywood and then glued together. 
The keyboard letter is then engraved onto the top of the key and a 3D printed holder is glued onto the bottom to attach to the key switch. This is obviously only one key, I still need 60 more of them, so let's get them designed. I drew the keys up in Inkscape and then gave them each a letter, symbol or name and then played around with some different colour options. I quite like this piece of grey walnut looking plywood that was included in the material pack that came with the M1. So I'm going to use this as is for the larger keys and I'm going to spray a piece of plywood from the pack white for the smaller keys. I'm not going to do too many coats of white so we still get a slight wooden texture to the white keys as well. So the finished keyboard should look something like this. To get nice clean engraving without smoke marks surrounding the letters, I'm going to cover the wood sheets in masking tape before cutting the pieces out. The smoke then just marks the tape and we can peel it off afterwards. So now we're ready to get the keycaps cut on the Xtool M1. To use the M1 you need to download and install their Xtool Creative Space software. Unfortunately the M1 is not currently supported by Lightburn. The Creative Space software is an offline package, not requiring registration or a connection to the internet to run, which I quite like. It works well and allows you to create basic designs or import designs made in other packages like Inkscape or Lightburn. The Creative Space also includes a wide range of free to use design elements and shapes, including prepared connectors for making up 3D models. It's also got a selection of ready to use project files, so it's quite a capable package to do some design work in. I'm going to load the grey sheets into the bed of the M1, propping it up on the supplied triangular prisms. These allow some airflow underneath the plywood. When I close the lid, it automatically takes a photo of the bed using the internal 16 megapixel camera. This then shows up in the software to help out with positioning the design without having to do any guesswork. They've also paired the camera with a laser to detect the thickness or height of the material that you've loaded into the bed. I've split the keys up into the white keys and the grey keys, and I'll cut the bottom halves of the keys separately. The 10 watt laser is made up of two 5 watt lasers that are combined into a single spot. This allows it to cut sheets of 3mm acrylic and 10mm plywood in a single pass. The plywood supplied in the material pack is only 3mm, so it should be pretty easy to cut through. I've done a few tests already and found that the recommended settings for cutting work perfectly and the engraving was a bit lighter than what I wanted for the keyboard, so I've increased the laser power and reduced the speed a bit. We can then send the design to the M1 and press the button on the front to start. It also gives you an estimate on how long it's going to take to complete the engraving and cutting. Although this seems to be roughly accurate for engraving, it can be quite far off for cutting, especially if you've got a lot of detailed design work. While the M1 is finishing off the rest of the keycap parts, let's get the 3D printed parts made up as well. These are pretty small, so I just printed 17 of them at a time from black PLA filament. The keys came out quite nicely. There is a bit of smoke and charring on the surface, but that's why we added the masking tape, so we should be able to peel that off when we're done assembling them. To make up each key we need to glue the ring onto the bottom and then add a 3D printed holder. Now I just need to glue the other 60 keys together and get them installed on the keyboard. With the keys all in place, I thought it might look better to add some colour to the keyboard. So I've cut out two more keys, and I cut my logo and a raspberry outline from some red stick-on PVC sheets that I used the blade cutting tool to cut out. I really didn't expect much from them because they're quite small, but the M1's blade cutting tool actually managed to cut them out reasonably well.
I also tried cutting out some additional designs for my home server rack. I cut these all from PVC sheets included in the materials pack as well. I also played around with some other included objects in the materials pack, like engraving my logo onto a slate coaster, and I used the rotary tool to engrave onto a mug. I forgot to mention that the keyboard's got RGB lighting behind the keys as well, so that's one of the reasons why I went with round keys instead of the square keys. Through using the machine for the past two weeks, I don't really have too many negative things to say about it. The machine is great and it works well. It's easy to use and I haven't run into any problems. If you're wanting to use the machine for cutting plywood, then I definitely suggest getting the more powerful 10 watt version. I haven't tried the M1's 5 watt laser, but from experience with other lasers, you'll need to do multiple passes or run really slowly to cut 3 to 5 more plywood. The air purifier is quite noisy, but it is moving quite a lot of air through it. I haven't got a calibrated air quality meter in my workshop but it does a good enough job at filtering the air that you can't smell any traces of wood or acrylic being cut. After cutting and engraving everything in this video, the first layer of the filter is clearly showing signs of being used, but it's still got a lot left in it before it'll need to be replaced. The materials pack that was included is really useful if you're a crafter, although I think it's a little bit too heavily weighted towards the blade cutting tool. There is a lot of vinyl, leather, PVC, cardstock and sticker sheets, but only one piece of walnut plywood and one sheet of regular plywood. There are also quite a few objects to engrave, but I personally would have liked a bit more plywood and possibly a sheet of acrylic as well. They do however have a wide range of material packs available from their web store, and these are all tailored to particular use cases. The rotary attachment was easy to hook up and use, and I like that it includes a height adjustable stand, so you don't have to try and balance the rollers or the object you're engraving on at weird angles. The blade cutting tool works much better than I expected on a dual purpose machine. It's able to cut very fine details without any issues, and it's great that I included a few spare blades as well. I'd also like to see Xtool develop some additional attachments for the tool, like tools for embossing, scoring, or even drawing. The M1 is clearly aimed at crafters for home or small business use. It's going to be perfect for creating home decor items, small home or business signs, customizing clothing or other textiles, and making up custom jewelry. It's much easier to set up and use than traditional CNC diode laser machines, due to its fully enclosed and pre-assembled design, so it's perfect for people who have never used a CNC machine before. The included camera also really helps out with positioning your designs on your materials, making sure you don't waste them. As for limitations or downsides to the machine, due to the enclosure design, the bed area of 385x300mm is quite a bit smaller than the 430x400mm you'd get on an open laser like the D1, and the maximum laser power caps out at 10 watts. so if you're wanting to cut thick materials you'll probably want to go with a 20 watt laser. Xtool also makes a number of add-ons and accessories from the M1, like a complete air assist system and a riser base with a honeycomb bed and acrylic sides so check out their web store which I've linked in the video description. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the keyboard I've made and the Xtool M1. I'll leave links to my blog where you can download the files I used to make these keycaps if you'd like to try making your own. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.